Hello everyone, you are watching the channel Incredible Facts. The littoral combatant class represents one of the biggest design innovation steps within the context of the U.S. Navy's surface combatant fleet. Fashioned in response to multi-dimensional challenges of modern naval warfare, especially from the littorals or coastal areas. Indeed, these ships are designed to conduct operations along the coasts of the theater of operations, where conventional warship's capabilities are at their extreme limit. The innovative class of ships, LCS, has two different versions, Freedom and Independence, very reflective of speed, maneuverability, and adaptability. In this video, we will trace the origins, features, applications, and differences of those types of ships that actually bring out what the importance is for which the LCS class serves within the U.S. Navy. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get more sent straight to your notifications. Let's start with a history of this class of ships. The need for littoral combat ships became quite obvious at the start of the 21st century, when the U.S. Navy realized there was a need for a new class of ships that can execute littoral missions. Deepwater-oriented traditional warships like destroyers and frigates may not be wholly effective against the particular challenges of a littoral environment made complex by shallow waters, heavy maritime traffic, and asymmetric warfare threats coming from small, fast boats or submarines. Incidentally, these are also the boats drug runners use to smuggle their goods into the United States, which means that there will always be plenty of work for these vessels. The LCS program was undertaken in order to solve the problems discussed above by providing a class of vessels that could effectively operate under such challenging conditions. The program intent, therefore, was to provide a fleet that was maneuverable, modular, and networked in its ships which could be rapidly reconfigured to execute a variety of missions, such as surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and mine countermeasures. To put it another way, according to the U.S. Navy, the LCS is a triple threat platform capable of changing missions with interchangeable modules. One of the more impressive features of this class is modularity. Unlike other warships, which are designed to perform certain missions, LCSs are easily re-equipped with different combat modules, thereby facilitating a transition from one mission to another. Basically, they are autonomous systems, which can be replaced to re-equip the ship for different missions. For example, an LCS could be fitted with modules for surface warfare against enemy ships, anti-submarine warfare to detect and track submarines, or mine countermeasures to defuse sea mines. Moreover, if you are aware of other developments in the U.S. military complex, they now try to make all developments modular, both on aircraft and ground equipment, so the fact that modularity has reached ships is no longer surprising. Additionally, it is installed with situational technologies advanced in combat. For instance, the combat systems installed on the ship are integrated into a wider naval network, in which a combat LCS can exchange information and coordinate its actions with other ships, aircraft, and shore-based assets. Due to this networked approach to combat, the LCS shall be able to do what is needed because it is a force multiplier that can be used to do tasks as part of a larger, coordinated force. Perhaps the unique thing about this LCS class is that it has two completely different variants, the Freedom class and the Independence class. Both classes come from different shipyards with different philosophies and design. This two-variant approach was meant to create competition and innovation within the LCS program itself, producing two ships with their own distinctive strengths and capabilities. So let's take a closer look at these ships. Freedom class. Constructed by Lockheed Martin, the Freedom Class single-hull design can rightly be referred to as a smaller version of a warship. The USS Freedom, the first of them, was commissioned in 2008. The people passed on her. By the way, the ship served 13 years and in 2021 was transferred to the reserve. All of these features, its graceful angular lines, its very limited length of around 387 feet and displacement of around 3,400 tons set it apart from all other vessels. A monohull design is better suited for narrow, constrained spaces like narrow straits and busy harbors. Consequently, this vessel is thoroughly appropriate for high maneuverability within tight spaces. 
One of the significant features of the Freedom class is its propulsion system. The combined diesel gas plant includes two Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines and two Colt Peelstick diesel engines. These engines power water cannons rather than traditional propellers, allowing the ship to achieve in excess of 40 knots. Coupled with its maneuverability, that speed allows these vessels to be very effective in missions which are quick and fast responses, like those involving maritime interdiction or search and rescue operations. In addition, there is a flight deck and hangar for an MH-60 RS Seahawk helicopter, along with multiple unmanned aerial vehicles. This significantly improves the ship's operational effectiveness in a broad range of missions, from anti-submarine warfare to intelligence and surveillance. In the context of armament, the main weapon aboard the Freedom Class vessel is a 57mm Mark 110 naval gun, supported by the RIM-116 Rolling Airframe Missile System to provide close-in defense. The ship was to be equipped with missiles of the AGM-114L Longbow Hellfire modification for ground ship warfare. Being equipped with advanced radar and sensor systems, Freedom has the capability of long-range target detection and even tracking making it feasible in the provision of reliable situational awareness during combat. It has a very small crew, provided to become possible due to extensive automation. With only about 40 sailors, a small crew is complemented by modern living quarters, which are comfortable and efficient during long stays at sea. And now let's look at one more representative of the LCS. No less interesting though. Independence Class USS Independence, the second lead ship of the class, was commissioned in 2010. The Independence class Trimarans have a greater stability in comparison to their Freedom class predecessors. As they have a bigger flight deck and more internal volume, which can be used for mission modules and other equipment, they are slightly larger than their Freedom class counterparts, approximately 419 feet in length and displacing around 3,100 tons. Perhaps the most striking characteristic of the Independence class is the vastness of its flight deck, one of the largest of the U.S. Navy's surface combatants. The huge flight deck allows the ship to support the operation of helicopters or UAVs concurrently, thus providing stronger capabilities for various kinds of mission tasks. This also means that the greater deck area translates to easy and convenient small boat launch and recovery operations, crucial for boarding, inspection, search and rescue, as well as special operations. We can guess, however, that you are thinking what makes a ship look so odd compared with other ships. This design was chosen for several good reasons. First of all, Trimaran class means excellent stability. With the three-hulled configuration, a Trimaran won't act like a single-hulled vessel or like a catamaran with violent pitching and rough seas. Besides, other sophisticated automated systems reduce the number of crew on board the ship, thereby reducing the cost of the ship. Although the Independence-class destroyer is larger than the Freedom-class ship, ideally it can take only 40 sailors on board, compared to a conventional destroyer that takes approximately above 200 sailors to deploy a destroyer squadron. It can have this lesser number of sailors only because, in addition to software, sensors, and its weapon systems, today they can be virtually fully automated and controlled with an integrated ship control system. In the area of armament, the Independence class is almost a clone of the Freedom class. It carries the same 57mm Mark 110 naval gun as the Freedom class has in addition to the same RAM-116 ram system and Hellfire missiles. So surely there is nothing similar about these ships. Very different. Finally, we want to consider the employment and strategic value of these ships. Initially, note that the entire LCS class was developed specifically to perform a set of individual missions considered by the Navy as necessary in modern naval warfare, mine warfare, surface warfare, and other tasks contributing to control over the coastal environment. The LCS could be installed with sonar systems, torpedoes, and other means of detecting and tracking submarines for the purpose of anti-submarine warfare. Helicopters and unmanned aerial vehicles immensely extend reach and flexibility of the board since the ship holds both shallow draft and high speed and is hence most suitable to perform anti-submarine warfare in areas close to shore. The second type of very important missions of LCS has been mine countermeasures. Within the coastal zones, the threat of mines has due importance to military as well as commercial shipping. These are among the challenges facing Ukraine, for instance, in the Black Sea. 
and therefore further development of mine countermeasure technologies based on the experience gained in this matter is of great importance. The LCS, well equipped with unmanned underwater vehicles and other specialized mine detection and defusing equipment, makes for the safe passage of friendly ships. In addition to these core missions, the LCS can perform a myriad of other tasks that range from maritime security to humanitarian aid and disaster relief to special operations. The quickly reconfigurable modularity allows the ship to be reconfigured to new missions. The Littoral Combat Ship class is an important departure in naval design, reflecting new capabilities in littoral operations. The Freedom and Independence types increase the effectiveness of the LCS class by offering speed and versatility. Such ships play a critical role in maritime security and power projection, and clearly will be an important element of the U.S. fleet for many years to come. What are your thoughts on the littoral combat ship class? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos sent straight to your notifications.